Hello, my name is Robert Belcham. I'm the executive chef of Refuel Restaurant here in Kitsilano, Vancouver. And today we're going to cook one of my favorite things to eat is uh, the classic ribeye steak. Now, there are lots of different types of steak out there. Um, but the most important thing to remember is that when you're cooking a ribeye steak, you want to find the best quality piece of meat you can. Um, whenever you're looking for a ribeye steak, you want to find one that has lots of white veins of fat throughout it, um, and one that's been dry aged, uh, if you can find that. It's all about the, the marbling. That's the white veins of fat you can see through the steak. That's the most important thing when it comes to steak. That's what keeps your steak deliciously moist and tender and uh, gives it lots of flavor. Um, this is not uh, a low fat steak dish. This is a steak that you have every once in a while. It's not a daily type of, me of meal. We're gonna cook that in a, in a way that you have uh, rarely seen. It's gonna be uh, fried in a frying pan. I, we're, you know, we're coming into grilling season, but it's not, you don't always have to grill a steak to have the best results. In fact, doing it this way, you'll be hard pressed to, to wanna go back to the grill. All right, so here we have our steak. And what we're gonna cook it in is an extremely hot, heavy bottom pan. These are I'll called a black steel pan or a blue steel pan. You can also use, which is one of my favorite pans I use at home all the time, is a cast iron pan. They're extremely cheap. You can get them at Canadian Tire for around 15 bucks and they last forever. So seasoning a steak uh, like this and doing it with this technique in a pan is very, very important. Um, we do something, we use diamond crystal kosher salt, which is something you can find in some of the specialty gourmet markets in Vancouver. Um, what's interesting about the salt is it has a, it has a very coarse texture, but the salt is hollow so it, it doesn't give a super salty flavor. You never use this technique when you're using just regular old iodized salt or sea salt, it doesn't work. It makes your steak too salty. Basically what we say is, we're, we're saying this, this, we're letting it snow over the steak. And the reason why we do this is because be, the, with the basting technique that we use, we lose a lot of this seasoning in the pan. So we have to make sure that there's a lot of seasoning on the steak at the beginning. So we, Quite a bit of salt. And this is the biggest difference between a restaurant cook and a home cook is that they won't season well enough. Now the most important thing about searing a piece of beef like this is to have extremely hot, really heavy bottom pan so you can retain that heat. You want to control your heat really well so it's nice and hot. And then we're going to cook it in a combination of canola oil and butter with some garlic and a little bit of time and that the combination of those four ingredients uh, the, and, the, and the milk fat and the butter melting out and caramelizing on top of the steak while it cooks is the most important thing about this technique and uh, it's what gives this this technique or it gives the steak such unbelievable depth of flavor uh, is that searing process so it's 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 a bit scary because it's really hot and there's lots of spattering and smoke and stuff but trust me when I say it's the it's the best thing so you can see little woofs of smoke coming off the the canola oil that means that the the pan is ready and you add the butter and it's gonna smoke up quite a bit and turn up my heat a little bit more the butter starts to foam up and on the tinges of it starting to turn a little bit to a little bit brown that's when we drop a little bit of one garlic clove that's been crushed and some little bit of thyme. That flavors the butter as we cook the steak. Then we add the steak in. Always add your steak in, your meat in, away from you, like that. So if it does happen to splash up, you won't get burnt. Nothing worse than getting burnt. And then you leave it alone. This is the thing that people have the hardest time with, is just letting the, letting the meat cook. I'm gonna turn the steak over so this is the other thing, you, you, you tilt the pan towards you and then you, you flip the steak over with the spoon and then back into the pan. That way you won't get any splatters of, of fat on you. Very important not to burn yourself. And as you can see, we have a very heavily caramelized piece of meat. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna let it, we're gonna continue to baste that helps keep this side of the meat really nice and moist. 
and bring the herbs up on top here. And as I baste, that flavor of those herbs gets impregnated into the steak. Yeah. Turn off the heat, like so. And then I'm going to drain the steak really well in the pan. So what we're gonna do now is let it rest. Letting it rest is one of the most important or one of the most important aspects of cooking any kind of protein. Uh, general rule of thumb is you let it rest for about as half, as, half as long as you've cooked it. So we cooked it for maybe four or five minutes now. So we're gonna let it rest for a couple minutes at least. The longer you let it rest, the more the meat is allowed to re relax and all the juices uh, come back into the center. And then, so when you cut into it, it doesn't just have a big pool of, of juice on the bottom of your plate. That's what you're not looking for. So I wanted to show one other aspect of this too is the amount of fat that we started with is exactly what we end off with. So no extra real fat. It's actually rendered fat from the steak. And you can see it come out here. And you can also see when I was talking about all the salt that we put on the outside of the steak. So you're worried about salt content. Well, all the salt's still here in the bottom of this pan. And that's what the difference with this technique is with then with a lot of different like grilling techniques is that you end up having, you may seem like a lot of, of seasoning on the fr at first, but at the end it's, it's the perfect amount. So after I've cut it open, there's no big pile of juice here and perfectly medium rare, perfect steak.